uh, I get to share with men, uh, I, I consider it to be a big deal. Uh, I know it's a big deal uh, because the Bible uh, speaks very explicitly on how a man uh, ought to be in the sense of being a, uh, a priest in his home, uh, a, I love how you say, um, a decisive leader. I believe that's the way you put it. Uh, and, I, and I firmly agree with that um, because the Lord has definitely called men to be able to uh, carry and to lift. Uh, may it be no wonder that our shoulders are broader uh, than that of our wives. And I think that may, in a figurative sense, uh, speak to the fact that we have been designed uh, to lead and to carry in the way that we have been charged according to God's word. I'm excited. And so I don't know, but I want to kind of get a feel for uh, the participants here. If you are a married man, uh, if you can kind of, I guess there in the chat, put that in there, just type M so I can know that you're married. Um, I presume that uh, everyone's here is married, but maybe not. I don't, I don't want to presume. Um, I see it. I see it. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. So as we go forward, I'm definitely going to, to speak to us as married men. And if you are um, thinking about or currently uh, have a business uh, in any way, I don't, I don't care if you want to call it a side hustle, if you cut hair on the side or cut grass on the side, um, or if it's your main thing, can you just go ahead and put uh, type in the letter B? So I can see that B meaning for business, um, side hustle or otherwise. Okay, good, good, excellent, excellent, great. Yeah, wonderful. So I know who I'm speaking to and who I'm talking to. This is wonderful. All right, well, let me uh, jump right in and share some things and give some insight uh, as to what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to kind of back up a little bit. I'm going to talk about the four A's, as in letter A, the four A's as it pertains to vision and stewardship. The four A's as it pertains to vision and stewardship. And so a little background about myself. I... Um, I worked in the banking industry for over 10 years. I started out in the real estate space, working for a boutique real estate firm. We were a small six person outfit and we were doing very well. Uh, the business was, this would have been right around 2007, 2008. Uh, and I don't have to tell you what happened then. If you were over the age of 15, you know what was happening in 2007 and 2008. Um, and so uh, it was a very uh, flourishing uh, time. The market was on the upswing just prior to, and then right around April 2008, everything, the house of cards came crumbling down. I think probably the biggest lesson that I learned from that situation, because the firm that I worked for uh, was bringing in about $260,000 a month. So you could just imagine a six person outfit bringing in 260K a month uh, was pretty amazing, all things considered. And I'll never forget um, as things began to turn and the business began to fold, I was going down an elevator with, um, with some of the higher ups in that small business. And they said something to me that I will never forget, um, but I think it is a very telling thing and a very uh, informative thing. And they said, whenever things or time are going well, whenever times are going well, just know to set something aside for when times are not going well. And one of the things I observed as, as I look back over my time in my life in that situation, I realized that during times of feasting, it is um, human nature, it is our nature to assume that things will always be going well. But we know, according to God's word, that there is a time and season for everything, time to, 
to sow, a time to reap, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which was planted. We know that that famines do happen. Uh, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. And it's easy, especially as the world would have it, for us to get inebriated and intoxicated during times of feasting to assume that they would continue. But the Bible tells us to be sober minded and admonishes us to be vigilant. And if we're going to be sober minded and we're going to be vigilant, that doesn't just limit itself to one area of our lives, but literally to the whole of our lives. And so as I transitioned out of that, I got into banking, did extremely well, worked for an international based bank, got to travel around the world um, and things were going great. And then right at about, I think it was May of 2013, uh, a week prior at the last bank I worked for that I was recruited by, by the way, uh, they had said to me, we're so glad you're a part of the team. So glad that you uh, accepted our offer. Everything you're doing is going great. It was all pats on the shoulder. And then one particular morning, I was called into the conference room. And I'll never forget it conference table and all the chairs were pushed to the flat screen uh, in the middle on the, the opposite side of the room and there were two chairs on one side and one chair on the other and when I was asked to go in there and no one else was in there but me and my two higher-ups I realized that what I was called in here for was not going to be a pleasant day for me to make a long story short they said that this would be my last day Mind you, after they had just patted me on the back, after they had just said that they were so glad that they recruited me, they, they, they said, we're going to ask you to turn in uh, your keys, and your key fob. They sat back and did the thumb twirl like this. And the amount of, of, of anger that I felt and frustration that I felt, uh, the Lord allowed it to be so to wake me up, to sober me up, to A, realize that. Uh, it doesn't matter whose name appears in the memo of my check. He's my provider. It doesn't matter uh, who sends me a direct deposit or, 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 or anything of that nature, but he is my source. And so I say all that to say this is exactly what I want to try to convey. And this is the thrust and the reason for why I'm going to share what I'm going to share in these four A's that I want to talk to you all about today. I want to start off with a quick point of scripture. It can be found in Proverbs uh, 27, 23. It says something very interesting. It says, know well the condition of your flocks and give attention to your herds for riches do not last forever. And does a crown endure to all generations? It's a question. And I thought it was very interesting because the writer here is saying, know well the state of your flocks, know the condition of your flocks. And a lot of times we we assess the amount of something, but we don't assess the condition of something. And so I want to use that kind of as an anchor point, a hinge point for what I want to talk about. So the first A that I want to share with you today is the A for awareness, awareness. It is uh, a travesty for a husband, for a man of God, for a priest in his home to be ignorant, to uh, uh, the condition of his flocks and and just so you know and I'm sure that we all know this when it speaks of flocks in biblical times you're talking to an agrarian culture where this where their wealth was directly uh, derived from not just land but also uh, from their livestock and so uh, the more livestock you had that was considered uh, greater wealth greater means and so to have an awareness to the condition, not just the amount or the number of your flocks is really, really important. If you're taking notes, if you want to type and throw it in the, the comment section, just type the word awareness. Got to be aware. Brothers, we must be aware. We cannot be blind to or ignorant to. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, sit down and do all the intricacies. Some, some of us may have a situation where our wives may be the ones who are doing the uh, deployment of funds, uh, the executing of certain things, and even in the acquisition of funds and so forth. But but it but it is by no means 
uh, an excuse or does it exonerate us from needing to know the condition of our flocks? And I want to say to you, as it was with me, do not assume that because things are going well, that things are indeed well. And don't assume that just because you may be getting patted on the back at a job or at a supervisor and thank God for his grace and thank God for his covering because he hears the cries of his children. And we know this. At the same time, I want to encourage you and I to, 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 to not move into what we would call willful blindness. Sometimes, uh, brothers, we don't want to be aware to the condition of our flocks because we don't like the condition of them. Sometimes we don't want to uh, uh, have an awareness because we don't like uh, the little that we have to work with. And I failed to mention when we say awareness, I am speaking in one sense of a budget. 